Okay, everyone, gather around. Let's go, lose control. Slip and slide on the dance floor. Hey everyone, Sumo Spiffy here. Welcome to the Banzuke predictions for the new year, Hatsu 2024. We're guessing some Banzuke. This time we've got the draft on the left, so you can see what I initially came up with right after the last Basha was over, and compare that to what we're going to have this time, what our end result is this time. Other than that, everything's basically the same, so let's just get started. As always, we'll start with our quick explanation of how the Sanyaku is set up. Terno Fuji, obviously. Yokozuna, he stays at the top spot. The Ozeki are ordered as they won in the last Basho. So, Kirishima, 13 wins. He goes in the first slot. Hoshoryu, 10 wins in the second slot. Takakesho, third. For those of you who are new here, the way that the Banzuke is set up at the top, if there is an uneven setup at a high rank, so there's an east but not a west here, they will, at the first opportunity, adjust that to balance it out further down. So we have three Ozeki. Instead of putting Takakesho over here so that it would be three and one, he's put over here so that it's two and two. That's how that's done. That's why that's done. We move on. Daisho and Kotonowaka. Now, this conversation always comes up in some corners when uh, a lower-ranked Sekiwake has a better record than a higher ranked one, should Kotonowaka and Daisho be switched? This is something they used to do, the same thing that they do with the Ozeki, but they've stopped doing that except in extreme situations. Kotonowaka only has two more wins than Daisho, or had only two more wins than Daisho, so that's not going to be enough to switch him. Plus, remember, Kotonowaka is getting a promotion of sorts from two east to one west. So they're not gonna mess with this. is gonna stay in the one east slot. Kotonowaka will move to Sekiwake one west, vacated by Wakamoto Haru, and then we move on. The Komatsubi are pretty easy. Thankfully, Atami Fuji lost on the last day of uh, November, so that made things very easy. Takiyasu, easily the number one guy for the Komatsubi, and of course, we've got Ura moving into the Komatsubi one west slot. It is probably the hardest schedule in sumo. And you know what? I'm good with it. Let's just enjoy the moment. I've talked about it enough. I'm not going to go on and on about it. Happy, happy days. Let's get to the Maigashira, though. First, we'll start with the easiest moves. That's at the top and the bottom. So we've got a Tommy Fuji all by himself at the top. He's going to go to Maigashira 1 East. This is going to be his first real test from the start of the Basho. We'll see how he does. Given his past performances, I would expect him to still do fairly well, but this is probably going to be the first Basha where we see him racking up some losses early. We'll see how he deals with that, but he seems like a good, humble kid. He seems like he's just going to keep working. I would expect at least a good winning record out of him, probably like nine wins, maybe ten. Anyway, down at the bottom... I messed up. I have Aoyama ahead of Shimizu Umi, and that was just a mathematical goof on my part. Shimizu Umi will be ahead of Aoyama. Shimizu Umi is a half rank ahead, and they're both already at the bottom of the division mathematically, even compared to all the guys who are in Makauchi. Now remember, we only have eight guys in the Sanyaku this time. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So 42 minus eight equals 34, so things change in this one compared to the last Basho. 34 divided by 2 equals 17 full ranks, so they're going to go all the way down to Maigashir 17 West. That's going to be the setup at the bottom. Now let's get to some slightly trickier stuff. Now at the start of this, I really do mean slightly trickier. We have a tie, but I went in a little bit deeper. I, I did the research on this one, and guys coming out of the Sanyaku, even though they haven't been given quite as much favoritism this year as they have in the past. In situations like this, they're pretty much always given the advantage. You're not going to see Midori Fuji get overpromoted ahead of Wakamoto Haru in this case. They could do it, but the odds of that seem pretty slim, like maybe 10%. So I feel it's pretty safe to put Wakamoto Haru at Maigashira 1 West and Midori Fuji at 2 East. Similarly, Abi is dropping out of Komasubi, and Gonoyama 
in this spot is getting his one rank increase on eight and seven. Interesting note, for the entirety of 2023, every single guy who has finished eight and seven has gotten a minimum of a one rank increase. There have been no half rank increases. That is in large part due to circumstances, but there have been times when they could have very easily given a guy a half rank increase and it would have been completely reasonable, a, a totally fair choice, but they haven't done that. So if Gonoyama was only getting a half rank increase here, it might make it more of a question, but he's getting his full rank. There's really no reason why Abi won't get shifted to two West. Tobizaru, with his seven and eight, will slot neatly in at three West again, so that's easy. Now, Ryudin and Shodai remain a question. For the most part, guys in the Joy have been given favorable treatment in situations like this, even when they're uh, slightly behind mathematically, there's been times when they've gotten favorable treatment. There was that Basho, I think it was Nagoya, uh, coming out of Nagoya into Aki in September, where we had that situation with Ryudin and Midori Fuji, and they just went straight in win order, and guys being in the joy didn't matter, but that seems to have been a one-off. Now, it is possible that they will go with Shodai behind Ryudin because Shodai will still not be getting his full demotion, and that seems to be a bigger deal to the committee this past year, seems to have been a bigger deal this past year. But overall, on average, I think it's safer to go with Shodai being ahead. It could be wrong. This is much closer to 50-50. I think Shodai has a slightly better chance of being pushed ahead. But if you go with Ryudin at 4 East, hey, nothing wrong with that. That makes sense. With Hokuto Fuji and Nishikigi, We've got another situation of Akomasubi dropping down, and he'll almost certainly be, be favored over Nishikigi. If you'll recall, Nishikigi last Basha was given fairly shocking favorable treatment by being placed ahead of Onisho despite being noticeably behind Onisho mathematically. So there's really no reason to think that in this case, in a tie, the Komasubi isn't going to be given preference. Plus, this gives Nishikigi his one rank decrease. It seems like a fairly straightforward choice. Kinbozan will move over. Shonen Umi will move up. By the way, the 7 and 8 guys do sometimes get half rank decreases. And further down in this one, you'll see 8 and 7 guys who I think are only going to get a half rank promotion. Uh, circumstances just lean into it. But this is fine. Now, Ichiyamamoto and Asanoyama. Is there really a choice here? Well, I think it is something to think about. Asanoyama moving to 7 East, getting a one rank decrease in his demotion makes some sense. He was only four and he only had four wins, four and 11, quote unquote, as they consider these things. But he fought really well. Ichi Yamamoto is getting his full promotion in this case. But I keep looking at it and I keep looking at it. And I'm really, really split on what the odds of this happening are. But given that they have Again, I've said this again and again. They have done more to promote guys with good records and not hold them back a little bit in favor of protecting guys with worse records. So in this case, I think Ichi is going to move to 7 East and Asanoyama to 7 West. I really feel this is maybe a 55-45, though. Uh, if you think Asanoyama is going to be 7 East, that is absolutely reasonable, even though he's behind mathematically. It does make some sense. So if that's your vibe, hey, go with it. Hokuseiho is going to be left behind because they don't care about this guy. They're the big frowny face on him. Now, Mitakeyumi and Hirodoumi are not really that complicated of a scenario because remember, Kota Shoho, he's coming up from Jurio. So he's going to end up falling way, 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 way back here. So there's actually an open slot there. I'm going to leave him there for the moment. But it's Mitakeyumi and Hirudoumi, which one of them is going to get the one, the half a rank less of a promotion. And given what I said before, you can probably guess what I'm going to say here. It's going to be Hirudoumi that goes back. Mitakeyumi, 8 and 7, he gets his one rank. They seem to have really put a priority on doing that for guys with 8 wins. So this one seems like a safer bet than it often would be. Now watch them take a totally different tack this time. I, I don't know, but given what they've done all year, I'm banking on this being the case. And now we get to an interesting choice. 
Meisei or Tamawashi. Again, in the past, they would never even consider over demoting a guy who's already 4 and 11 and dropping this far. Considering he was in the joy, I really don't think they're going to keep Tamawashi here and move Meisei back. So we'll move Tamawashi. And now we just start sliding guys back a half rank at a time, a half rank at a time, a half rank at a time. Now, if they really wanted to keep Satana Umi and Oho with their one rank increases, they could. But then you're taking guys who are mathematically a half rank behind the guys ahead of them and just flip-flopping them for really a very arbitrary reason. I, I very much doubt that's going to happen. Now, what could be more interesting is we've got Takano Sho moving back. So now he's getting over-demoted. And, ono, and uh, Miyogiryu is getting over-demoted. And we've got to move Chirino Umi back. So he's getting under-promoted. And now we've got to move Endo back. So he's getting over-demoted. What do they do here? Do they leave this with the math? Well, this is what I think is going to happen. So you've got Sadano Umi and Oho. They cannot go any further down or they won't get a promotion. And that's not going to happen. The only way you can move Takano Sho or Miyogiryu up is to then move someone like Surugisho back. Well, this is what happens if you do that. You move Takanosho up, which means you have to move Oho up. Oh, and let's move Miyogiryu up, which means Surugisho has to come all the way back here. So you're going to give Oho a full rank on 8 and 7, but Surugisho only one rank on 9 and 6? I don't think that's going to happen. They haven't been quite as shy about over demotions as in the past. I don't see any reason why Takanosho and Miyogiryu are going to be saved in this way. They're going to take that extra half rank. It is what it is. But Endo, Onisho, and Chorino Umi. Right now, Chorino Umi is getting his two and a half ranks, so a slight under promotion. But in the committee's eyes, two and a half ranks, two ranks, one and a half ranks, does that really matter that much? It should. In terms of fairness, it probably should. But I don't know if it will. Endo is getting over demoted. And really, what's the problem? If they bump him up, save him a little bit, so that Churna Umi gets bumped back, he gets two ranks, yeah, that's still fine, right? But then that also makes room for Onisho to only get eight and a half ranks instead of the full nine. At three and 12, if they're going to protect anybody from a maximum drop, it's going to be him. And Churna Umi, yeah, nine and six is great. That you know, he deserves to go up a little bit more, but maybe he needs to prove himself a little bit. I would not be the least bit surprised if we ended up seeing Endo get bumped up, Onisho get bumped up, and Chorna Umi get bumped back. Or even Onisho get bumped up and Endo remaining over demoted. That seems a little less likely. I would be pretty surprised if they over demoted one guy just to under demote another guy even more but it's by no means impossible the safe bet of course is that you put your umi up in front you leave him in order this is what should happen but i think there's a very very real possibility that they go with endo then onisho then your umi i am leaning that way right now it is way more risky of a pick in terms of guess the bonzake than I usually make, and I will probably end up not going with this, but I am very, very strongly looking at this as a possibility, and I think you should too. And now we've got to do the Jirio guys. Now, as you can see on the draft, I had them all packed in at the bottom, because that was, at a glance, what made the most sense to me. They seem to be doing that a lot. But looking more carefully, they have done that while also maximizing the demotions, not over-demoting, but maximizing the demotions for guys who are already in Makauchi. Now, regardless, Takara Fuji is not going any lower than 16 East, so Bushozan can safely be put at 16 West. No big deal there. But where I had Tomokaze getting a little under demotion and Takara Fuji getting a little under demotion, and then Kotoshoho and Onosato coming in at these lower spots, I don't think that's right now. And I think... Somebody mentioned this in the comments of the draft. I think it was Tiger Boy. And I am inclined to agree that Kotoshoho and Onosato should be bumped up. If we put Kotoshoho here, Tomokaze here, Onosato here, 
and Takara Fuji here. This really isn't that much of a difference, but it gives Tomokaze and Takara Fuji the demotions they're supposed to get. And I was a little surprised. I thought there were going to be more instances that I just hadn't remembered where guys were under demoted to push down the guys coming up from Jurio that much more, but it really didn't happen that much. It really didn't happen at all. In fact, there was one tournament, I'm forgetting which one it was, I think either May or July, where Chio Shoma was over demoted to make an extra space for a guy coming up from Jurio. So I really do think now that Tomokaze and Takara Fuji are going to get bumped back like this. Kota Shoho will go to 14 West, Onosato to 15 West, Bushozan, Shimizu Umi, Aoyama bring up the rear. And that's it for Guess the Bonds, okay, this time. It was fairly straightforward. There weren't a lot of really weird choices to make. Um, just a lot of ties where we had to go uh, this guy or that guy. But that's a lot less complicated, which means it's going to be pretty high scoring. You're going to have to be on point with your picks to really finish well. But I know you can do it. So get in there, submit your picks. Remember, today, the day of recording and the day of release is the 16th of December. The 18th, around midday, U.S. time, is the deadline. So get those picks in. Other than that, working on the Onosato breakdown, going to have a uh, predictions for the new year, and anything else I can come up with that sounds like it'll be fun. So have a great day, get your picks in, and I'll see you soon.